Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Shivan and I'm a first year medical student studying at King's College London. I also make YouTube videos about medical school and university which is what this channel is all about. And at the end of the video, if you find it useful, if you find my content interesting, do consider subscribing to my channel. So today's video, it's about the most central part of any medical student, no, any student's life, and that is studying. All of us, I can think all of us can agree, we spend most of our time studying in some form or the other. And I'm gonna sit here and talk about how I optimize my own process of studying for maximum output, maximum retention, and uh, maximum understanding as well. So there'll be a natural flow to the video, but there are a few things that I want you to look out for throughout the video as well, things to pay attention to. And this includes my routine, the tools that I use, the apps that I use, and any additional resources I mentioned throughout the video. And now without any further delay, let's get right into it. So firstly, I'm gonna talk about organization because being organized is one of the most important things when starting. So I, I'll say that I study on almost a daily basis and uh, I study for a large amount of time throughout the day, but I also have a lot of other things to do. So I need to be well organized so I can use my time in the most efficient way possible. If you've heard the idea of GDD or getting things done, you know that the key tool for organization and pro uh, productivity is writing things down finding a place to write things down, writing them down in the clearest way possible and then revisiting this place where you're logging everything because basically the concept that this is all based on is that our mind is meant to create ideas but not to store them. So when we place it onto an external place, uh, it gets makes us more efficient because our capacity is not that high and the more space we empty out, the better we can use our own minds. I have two key tools for organization when I'm studying and one is an Excel sheet with a list of all my lectures and all my tutorials, my entire timetable schedule from the medical school. I basically just exported the timetable off of the university website onto an Excel sheet and what I do is I have a list of all those lectures so I know what I need to do and then I color code them and like if I color code them green that means I've done a, a lecture if I color code it if it's not filled in that means I've not done it if it's red that means I've missed it so I know exactly where I lie at any point of time and at any time if I'm behind on lectures which I don't recommend you be but that happens sometimes I can just visit this excel sheet and I know exactly what I need to do next. Now for my own organization for my own revision and self-studying I organize that through google tasks. In google tasks I have a, a list of tasks I have a task list called med school and under med school I list all the imminent tasks for med school all the coming up uh, all the assignments that are coming up all the revision I should be doing in the near future and I can basically look back on that at any time I can put a date for it I can put like a deadline for it and I just tick them off as I finish so now let's get into the idea of actual studying like being efficient while doing the actual studying bit. I divide studying into two different parts. You have learning and you have revision. I think learning, the main focus in learning is on understanding versus the main focus of revision is to, uh, is to retain information and to practice concepts and uh, newly learned concepts that you need to apply in a certain situation. And basically, if you learn well, that makes revision easier. I learn through timetable activities, mainly such as lectures, tutorials. I focus on my learning here. Here my main aim is not retention when I'm watching a lecture for the first time or something like that. It's basically understanding everything because then when I go to revise it, it'll be easier to retain the information. Uh, whereas in, for revision, I focus on things such as notes, going through notes, flashcards, uh, then uh, doing 
questions, past paper questions, things like that. Although in med school, to be fair, you don't have that many past questions, but whatever few you can find. Uh, so these are the best retention, uh, retention and revision methods according to me. I also don't have a very strict schedule for the nature of my studying in the way that in some weeks where I have more lectures I'll focus more on the learning part and doing those timetable lectures and in weeks where I'm, uh, I have more free time I'll basically fit in more revision where I'll do more of my own studying at my own pace and uh, things that I want to look at particularly and things that I want to revise. Initially, when you start medical school, uh, you will take some time to find your footing and what amount of studying, what way of studying is perfect for you because at the end of the day, it is a bit of an individualized pr process and what works for you specifically. So now let's move on to tools. So tools are very important to me because without the tools that I have, my studying process would be entirely different, basically they mold how I study, what I used to study, everything. So my first tool that I used to study is my MacBook Pro. And the second tool that I use is my iPad. So my MacBook and my iPad are what really make up my central studying, uh, you know, environment. And I have a third tool, these noise canceling headphones which I always use when studying and they just make me so much more efficient. So basically let me talk about these three devices a bit. Uh, what using my laptop and my iPad, what they add is a sort of dual screen setup and that is very helpful because I can either be watching a lecture and taking notes at the same time or I can be looking at my lecture notes and I can be making flashcards at the same time. And uh, basically, when I'm doing assignments, when I'm doing anything, it's so much easier to just have two screens. And with the split screen function of both of these, I can double the number of screens. I can basically be looking at four screens at once as well. So that dual screen setup is something that really helps a lot. Uh, my, I'd say my laptop is perfect for watching lectures, for writing out assignments, for taking typed up notes, which I do take for uh, certain types of lectures and certain types of uh, workshops um, and I'd say my uh, iPad is the perfect note-taking device and it's very helpful for interactive learning. There are a few apps that I use on it that really aid my uh, studying and understanding for things like anatomy and stuff like that. Uh, now let me talk about the apps that I use and this is very important. Uh, so basically I use uh, four to five main apps. The first and most important one, my most used app would be GoodNotes, GoodNotes 5. And I use that on my iPad and it's basically a note taking app on the iPad and basically you can write out notes on it. And it is so helpful and the organization is amazing. So I'll put it up. I'll put a video up on the screen somewhere here and I'm gonna talk simultaneously. So I, it's basically very, very organized. I can organize it into folder. I can organize my notes into folders are all under MBBS stage one. And then I can go into further modules. I can go deeper into those modules and then I can save lecture, I can save lecture PowerPoints on here and I can annotate the PowerPoints or I can take quick notes or I can make a notebook and write notes about something and that's just, it's just a very helpful tool because the thing is writing out my notes, uh, like making handwritten notes and actually the action of writing them out is something that helps a lot with retention and it makes your notes a lot more interactive in a way and personalized so that it you can come back to your notes and really understand what you've written rather than just typing out words. And it's so organized. I have like, in the past couple of months that I've had my iPad, I've probably made at least like, I'd say 200, 250 different uh, good note, note things. And uh, yeah, I actually can't imagine having that much information on paper and that would be a disaster. So that's why I love using GoodNotes. The, the next app I use is Evernote. Evernote is my hat, 
is my typing note taking app it's very it's a very useful app for typing if you want to type out your notes if that's something that's better for you because i know there are people who prefer typing out their notes um evernote also has really good organization you can organize all your notes into notebooks and then um uh, you can just basically you can annotate your notes on evernote as well which is again very useful you can save documents on the evernote things like that and uh, basically it's what i used before i got my ipad and started taking uh handwritten ish notes on my ipad and basically both of these are note taking apps and note taking apps really help me in studying because they have this first pass effect or the pass system that Rachel Sather talks about in her videos and uh, it's basically the number of times you revisit certain content whether it's you visit it the f- first time watching a lecture the second time you visit it you're taking notes the third time you visit it you're making flashcards the fourth time you visit it you're studying those flashcards like that the more passes you do the more familiarized you get with the content and the better you retain it so basically note taking has this sort of first or second pass effect and it re- it's really helps in the third pass as well because coming back to the notes is a lot easier and uh, making flashcards from notes is much easier as well then the last app i use okay i don't know why i said 4 5 that's just 3 is anki anki is my favorite flashcard making app i mean i've seen quizlet i've seen uh, i typed good notes but what really helps help me or what i found really useful was anki uh they are quite complicated to figure out like you should probably watch a couple of videos on it before you start using anki uh personalizing all the settings and everything like that but basically every day you can return to anki and you have new cards so whenever you want to study you can just return to your anki flashcards and you can start studying there and with image occlusion you can like make entire diagrams uh and the diagrams are so like they're so interactive and so helpful in basically you can get a diagram and you can cover certain terms on it and then that makes that diagram into flashcards so like they hide a particular term it's it's very useful and basically the concept of using flashcards is they uh employ active recall where because reading through material uh doesn't help you retain information as well as trying to test yourself on that material i mean if you never expose yourself to material obviously the first step would be watching it reading through it but after that you need to start testing yourself on it so your brain actually tries to remember that information and when it goes through that process of trying to remember it the next time that pathway will become easier and it will just naturally occur in a way so active recall that way is best achieved through flashcards for me at least Now, let me mention some additional resources so additional resources i use uh, include netters uh anatomy coloring book a short you give me a second this coloring book right here it's it's i mean it's not a very central tool to me starting but like it has so many diagrams and it covers everything in detail and sometimes when i'm just bored or i want to do something i can just open up this big coloring book and i can start coloring in some anatomy that i've learned and basically coloring it gets you thinking about it and it's a good way to remember the information as well i also use this oxford concise medical dictionary uh sometimes when when i'm studying as well because when i want to look up terms that i don't know or i don't remember or don't understand and basically actually physically looking through the book i see a go i like come across other terms that i heard of or haven't heard of and i learn what they mean as well so i do it once in a while obviously when i'm in a very efficient mode or whatever i right? just look them up because that's much quicker but sometimes it's fun to go through the dictionary as well like got this for free from the mdu so it's just a beneficial additional tool i guess and not to me basically one very important tool that i use is uh uh what do you call it is a complete anatomy so complete anatomy is an amazing 
medical app and it basically um, you can see the entire human body on that app and you can just interact with it it's a way of doing like online or virtual dissection and you can basically open up the body add layers to it uh, you can if you tap on a particular part it focuses on that particular part and uh, you you can basically just look at that you can look at all the features on it like on a particular bone you can look at all the processes rami things like that and uh, yeah that just makes the whole spatial understanding so much easier in anatomy especially it's especially useful right now because we haven't had much of an opportunity to do dissection so um the spatial understanding really comes in well when you use apps like this so yeah that basically sums up everything i would want to mention about studying uh, in medical school that is how i study that's everything i use that's all my tools and i'm assuming this will change at some point in the future but this is what's working for me right now and uh, yeah i guess that's pretty much it and i'll summarize all this down below in the description you can check it out i might even put some time stamps in there and otherwise i hope you found the video helpful i hope you found it enjoyable i hope you could relate to it somehow as a medical student as a student and i hope it gave you some ideas to for how to improve your own uh, method of studying uh, if you have any suggestions or comments leave them down below in the comment section don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video